Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 31, Soft C Endings. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your blue book open to page 191. You'll also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever you mark on, whatever I mark on the board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. If at any point I'm moving too fast, please pause the video and catch up. You'll notice I've already gone ahead and broken all of our words into two syllables by using these purple vertical lines. I've also used purple check marks to mark the stressed syllable. That is the part of the word that's a little bit, uh, that we say a little bit louder and stronger. This week, all of our words have a stressed first syllable with the exception of number 11, police, police. We say that second part a little bit louder and stronger. Notice that's going to impact the pronunciation of that I-C-E chunk. Okay, so last week we started talking about soft C words. And I know it was a really long video and we really hit home that whole concept of soft C. So I'm going to try to make this week a little bit shorter. This week, all of our words will contain a soft C as well. But that soft C will be at the very end of the word. That soft C will always be followed by E. And the only job of that E is to make the C soft. Okay, because that soft C is showing up at the end of an unstressed syllable, we're going to hear a lot of that schwa sound, that uh sound. Okay, you already know that the schwa sound is very tricky. It can be represented by an I, an A, uh, a U. There are lots of different ways to make that schwa sound. So that's what's going to be tricky this week. That first syllable of each word, crev, fur, grim, just, let, that's going to be easy for you guys. Those are just going to be closed syllables, R controlled syllables, or open syllables. You guys are experts on that. The tricky part is going to be um, knowing whether to use I-C-E, A-C-E, or U-C-E at the end of the word. So that's where your eyes are really going to have to focus and maybe you'll want to pronounce the words a little bit differently. So for instance, even though we know that this is pronounced furnace, in our minds we're going to think fur nace we're going to stretch out that a so we remember that it's a making the schwa sound all right but let's back up for a second let's read our list as we do use your ears to listen for that soft c at the end of each word and use your eyes to pay attention to the vowel that comes before the soft c here we go crevice furnace Grimace, justice, lettuce, malice, necklace, notice, office, palace, police, practice, service, surface, terrace. All right. By the way, all of our words this week can be used as a noun. When a word ends with that s sound, it's probably going to be a noun. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's go through. And the first thing I want to do is I want to look for words that use I-C-E to make that us sound. So here it is in crevice. We see it again in justice. Malice. Notice office, let's skip this one for a second, practice, service, and that's it. Okay, in all of these words, that I-C-E is not pronounced ice, 
it's pronounced s. It's that schwa plus s. So over here, blue box equals I C E, and that's going to make a schwa sound, a us. Okay. Now, we can make that same exact sound using A-C-E. So here it is in furnace, grimace, necklace, palace, surface, and terrace. So that's also a very common pattern, right? And how do you know if a word should end with I-C-E or A-C-E? Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you. Um, just have to use your eyes and pay attention to what looks right. Because A-C-E is going to make that same exact schwa sound. Okay? If you are trying to spell a word that ends with the us. It's probably going to be I-C-E or A-C-E. However, there are exceptions. Right here, lettuce uses U-C-E to make that same exact sound. So just memorize lettuce. I can't even think of any other words that end with U-C-E, so that's an oddball. And then know that the rest of the time, if you want a word to end with us, it's going to be A-C-E or I-C-E, okay? Not O-C-E, not E-C-E. Now, all of the words we just marked up are in the unstressed syllable, which is why they reverted to that uh schwa sound. But if we look at police, Notice the second syllable is stressed here. So instead of making a schwa sound, it's making a long E. Police. You see this sometimes in words like magazine. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of words that end with I-C-E, I-N-E. Um, and I'm drawing a blank, but just know that sometimes if it's going to be the stress syllable, that I is going to make an E sound. So right here we have that same I-C-E chunk, but it's pronounced E's, police, okay? All right, so what I'd like to do now is go through our words and make sure we know what all of them mean. Okay, so let's start with crevice. A crevice is a thing. It's a noun and it's a crack or an opening usually in rock. So if you're climbing uh, a mountain, you're trying to do some like rock, like mountain, like the rock face climbing, you're going to look for little crevices, little places to stick your feet and your hands so you can climb up. So a crevice is a crack. A furnace is a machine. It burns wood or oil to produce heat. Okay, so we're just going to say furnace is something that makes heat. A grimace is a facial expression. It can also be used as a verb. So let's say you twist your ankle and it hurts a lot. You're going to grimace. <sighs> that like pained look on your face. So a grimace is a pained look. To grimace means to make a pained look. Justice is a noun. It's fairness, right? We have a whole justice system. We have judges and lawyers and um, courtrooms uh, we have the Supreme Court, we have state level courts. Their whole job is to make sure that things are done fairly in our country, that people get what they deserve, and that they receive justice, right? Lettuce, that's a green leafy vegetable, that's a noun. Malice 
um, is a noun, and it means evil or mean intent. So when I'm walking down the hall with a group of kids, um, and a child says, oh, so-and-so just tripped me. Well, the first thing I need to figure out and the first thing they need to figure out is was there any malice involved? Did that kid trip them on purpose because they were trying to hurt them? Or was it just an accident, right? Kids stumble and bump into each other all the time. So if you do something with malice, you do it on purpose because you're trying to hurt somebody else. A necklace, you know what that is, a piece of jewelry. Notice it's a compound word because it's really lace or decoration for your neck. So if you think of that as necklace being lace for your neck, you'll know to use the A-C-E. Okay, a notice can be a thing, right? It could be a piece of paper, like if the school is having bingo night on Thursday, they might send home a notice, a piece of paper for your parents. If they're scheduling parent-teacher conferences for next week, they're going to send home a notice. So that can be a piece of paper, but it can also be used as a verb. If you notice something, you see it. You pay attention to it, right? So uh, you might say, hey, how come you didn't tell me that I had you know, poppy seeds stuck in my teeth. And your friend will say, well, I didn't notice. I didn't see that. An office is a workplace, right? Usually has desks and computers and that sort of thing. A palace is another word for a castle. Police, those are people that get paid to protect us and keep our towns and cities and highways safe. Um, Practice can be a thing if we're talking about soccer practice, baseball practice, or um, I need more practice. I'm trying to be really good at playing piano. I need more practice. So it can be used as a noun. It can also be used as a verb, right? You go to soccer practice so you can practice your soccer skills. Service is a noun right? It's something you provide. So if you think about any job in the world, the person who's doing that job is either providing a good or a service. If you are a baker, you are providing bread. That's a good. If you are a hairdresser, you are cutting people's hair. That's a service, right? So a service is something you do for other people. A teacher provides a service. A lawyer provides a service. Um, a health, um, like a, um, a trainer at the gym or a registered dietitian, they provide a service. They're not handing you something. They're not handing you a good, but they're doing something to help you. A surface is a noun. Um, when you're cleaning up the kitchen, you have to wipe down all the surfaces, the countertops, the tables. And then a terrace is also a noun. That's like, um, like a patio. Okay, so if your parents put in a pool in your backyard, they might have a nice stone or concrete terrace around it where people can sit and visit. All right, um, before you go, I do want to draw your attention to page 194. On 194, we have a new Latin chunk prefix. Sometimes it's used as a prefix, sometimes a root. It's mal. Whenever you see M-A-L, it means bad. Okay? So we saw that here in malice. If somebody does something with malice, they have bad intentions. They're trying to do something bad to someone else. But you also see this tacked on to the front of a word. So for an instance, if you bought a new uh, remote control car and it starts to malfunction, it breaks down, it's now functioning in a bad way. Um, if you have to go to the hospital 
um, to have surgery. Maybe you need um, a foot amputated, but they amputate, they cut off the wrong foot. You could sue them for malpractice. They're, they're practicing their job in a bad way, right? They did it wrong. So think of mal as bad or wrong. Um, kids who are malnourished do not get enough food to eat. So they're, they are nourished in a bad way or the wrong way. Malnutrition means bad nutrition. So there's other examples here as well. So you're going to use the words from the word bank. Notice they all have mal in them and you're going to fit them into the sentences in a way that makes sense. All right, that's all I have for you today. Good luck and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.